Hello and welcome back to the course in our programming. And today we're talking about the aesthetics layer of our visualization. And actually we're going to get an introduction to ggplot, the main function of the ggplot2 library. So let's go and check it out. So this is what we did in the previous tutorial. We talked about factors and we prepared our data set. Now let's start talking about aesthetics. All right, we're going to first load the library, which is, or the package, the correct term is load the package using the library function, ggplot2. And the function that we're going to be using is ggplot. The last time, previously we used qplot and qplot is kind of like a quick plot. That's what the Q stands for. It's a very quick uh, tool. ggplot is the actual heavy artillery function of this library. And we're going to start learning it today. All right, first you want to, just like with qplot, supply the data. So you want to say data equals movies. Then you want to create the aesthetics. And this is where things start getting a bit more complicated, but don't worry throughout this section, you will definitely practice this so many times that it will become intuitive. All right, so you got to type in the function called AES for aesthetics. And that is the function that allows you to set a aesthetics. And as we remember, aesthetics is how your data maps to what you want to see. It's, it's not even the geometry layer yet. We're still, so if I go back here, we're still here. So we're, these first two layers are insufficient to actually see something. We'll need the geometries layer. So let's go ahead and first tell ggplot how we want to map the data. We want to say, well, let's go ahead and start by creating that plot that the CEO wanted, the critic rating on the bottom and on axis and the audience rating on the top one. So we want to say X equals critic rating. And now we can actually not say movies dollar sign critic rating because uh, ggplot knows that we're working with this data set. And then here we're going to go Y equals audience rating. All right. So what happens if I run this line? Nothing happens. What actually, well, let's have a look here. You can see that an empty plot has appeared with nothing on it. And why is that? Well, we did say critic rating. We want critic rating on the bottom and audience rating on the top that's on, or on the left. That's right. But where are the dots or the squares or the triangles or the lines? Well, that's exactly it. Uh, ggplot doesn't know what we want. It doesn't know that do we want lines or do we want dots or do we want bubbles? So we've got to tell it, right? So we've got to, we're actually now going to run a bit ahead of ourselves. We're going to introduce the geometry layer, but it's a necessity because otherwise we won't see anything. So let's go ahead and just copy that. And this time we'll say plus, right? And let's, let's actually say here, add geometry. So we remember what's going on plus, and here we're going to say geom underscore point. Right. So if we run this now, there we go. Now we can see something good. And by the way, it's uh, convenient to add new layers with this plus sign when you just put them on a new line. So keep the plus on this line. So R doesn't run this line by itself. It expects a new line. And then you just add a new layer on every new line. It's just more convenient like that. So like this, I can either highlight both lines and run it, or I can li run line by line and R will wait until the end. And so there we go. That's our critics uh, rating and audience ratings. Okay, beautiful. So now what are we going to do? Let's add more aesthetics. And let's remember aesthetics are things that we can see, right? Now we have the geometry. Now we can assign more parameters of that geometry. And what is a parameter of this geometry? Another one is, of course, color. So let's do that. Let's add color. All right, I'm going to just copy this so we don't have to retype it. And here, I'm going to say comma, I'm sure here I'm going to say color equals genre. Yeah, makes sense, right? So if I run these two lines, you'll see that the plot has been colored by the genre of the movie and we've actually got a legend. So ggplot is actually very smart. We don't have to create the legend on our own. It gets added automatically. All right. And another thing is like, because we're running out of space, I'm just going to put this on a new line as well. And because of this comma, R is going to know that this line's not finished. So it's going to go and wait until we run all of them. All right, and now we're going to add another aesthetic, which is size. Size is another thing we can see, right? And all of this is possible because we know, or R knows what geometry we want. And now we can just keep adding things on. So we're going to say size equals, um, let's also say genre, right? Let's, let's have a look at that. So what you'll see here is that they're colored by, uh, or the size is selected by genre, which uh, and you've got a legend here, which combines color and genre, which are very smart. But you've got a warning at the bottom saying using size for a discrete variable is not advised. Makes sense, right? Because 
that's very misleading to the eye. Why would thriller be bigger than action? What, what is the logic behind that? So we're going to replace that. We're going to say add size, let's say better way. Uh, and here we're going to say instead of genre, we'll let's just say budget. Budget millions is our variable. And if I run that, okay, that makes more sense, right? So bigger bubbles represent movies that had a bigger budget. And smaller bubbles are smaller budgets. And then color is genre. And then you've got the critic rating here and the audience rating. And you can already tell some some very interesting insights from this visualization on its own. You can see that, all right, so if our horizontal or our diagonal goes through this, you can see that the audience is definitely more forgiving to movies and they only kind of line up together with the critics over here. So the audience, the bubbles are always above the diagonal, mostly above the diagonal, and it means the audience is like rates the movies higher. And you can tell other things from here as well. Like there's not it's a bit hard because, and we'll make it, we'll definitely make it better throughout this section, but it's already a good starting point. So here I wanted to say something like, I wanted to say this is number one that we're going to put into our visualization, but I'll just keep it like that. But remember that we will make it, we will improve it uh, further down in the section. As we learn new things, we'll see how we can actually improve the chart, but it's already a great start. And um, that's it for today. In the next tutorial, we will learn another new skill with ggplot. And uh, go ahead and practice with that. Try fiddling around with the ggplot function and changing the variables or aesthetics here. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, happy coding. <laughs>